Hello, this is Awesome Astronomy on YouTube, and in this show, we're going to take a look at Elon Musk's reason for building and mass producing a giant new rocket known as Starship. Quite simply, he thinks it's too risky having all of humanity living only on one planet and wants us to be multi planetary. So, if anything happens to Earth, we've got some backup genes, for want of a better term, elsewhere. If the dinosaurs were smarter, more dexterous, and developed a space program, those that made a colony on another planet could still be alive today. And if you like this video, Awesome Astronomy is also available twice a month in podcast form. Go check them out on the links below. And please do hit that subscribe button on YouTube and like the show here too. So, over the last half a billion years, there have been at least five events that have obliterated all but the hardiest life forms on Earth. The first, 450 million years ago, was due to global warming from volcanoes, and wiped out 60% of all life on Earth. In the second extinction event, 380 million years ago, 70% of all life died out over a catastrophic period lasting 20 million years, this time from global cooling. 250 million years ago, the Permian-Triassic extinction event wiped out around 95% of all life, and just 50 million years later, as life was getting a foothold again, 75% of it succumbed to volcanic carbon sulfur dioxide. And then, 66 million years ago, our dinosaur friend from earlier died out, along with 76% of all other species, all because they cared little for rockets or space programs. So it does make sense to have a backup plan. We know the Earth will become uninhabitable as the sun runs out of fuel in 4 billion years, but before then, we could have more runaway greenhouse effects. Ice ages, asteroid impacts, global conflicts and pandemics that could make life very difficult here, or kill humanity off entirely. If we had human civilization on two or even more planets, that would increase the chances of humanity surviving. And in a September 2016 technical presentation, Elon Musk laid out not only his plans to explore the solar system and colonize Mars, but also the means to do this with his flexible new giant rocket and booster called Starship. In fact, as early as March 2013, when SpaceX had just begun flying reusable rockets, Musk had said he would be on the first trip to Mars. He told people at South by Southwest, I want to die on Mars, just not on impact. But in 2016, he said he would need just 40 to 100 years to create a self-sustaining civilization of a million people on Mars, and outlined a plan to send a thousand starships with 450 tons of supplies or a hundred people per ship, a ship that hadn't been built at that point. He admitted that the likelihood of death is very high and later in 2021 pulled no punches in stating the hardship in the name of adventure. Thousands yeah, of volunteers, if not millions of volunteers who would yeah, want to go. I, I mean, honestly, a bunch of people probably will die in the beginning. It's, yeah. it's tough sledding over there. And in 2021, Musk can be more confident. SpaceX have already designed and built a dozen Starship prototypes, and he was days away from the first successful autonomous launch and landing of the Starship cargo, or human habitation stage. With this success, progress turned to building the giant Starship booster rocket, two-thirds the size of a Saturn V moon rocket that will get the Starship into orbit, ready to cruise on over to Mars. We know SpaceX are building technology to turn carbon dioxide in Mars' atmosphere into methane and oxygen to power rockets and air to breathe on Mars. We know that SpaceX's iterative development aims to turn prototypes into mass manufacture of these rockets, and they'll soon be turning out Raptor rocket engines at a rate of one every 12 hours. It's a big ask, though, to go from a prototype on the launch pads to a human-rated spacecraft that can successfully get people to Mars. But it was a big ask to develop a reusable rocket that had never been done before and turn it into the most reliable orbital rocket in service. It was a big ask to then build a heavy launch version of it and successfully launch that. It was also a big ask to turn production from these Falcon rockets to the Starship Leviathan prototypes that are launched, exploded, and launched again until they get them right month after month after month. So am I betting against it? No. Progress on these Starship rockets is moving 
at a phenomenal pace and I think only an unexpected death of Elon Musk or the death of humans on the rocket in test flight is going to slow it down or kill the program altogether. But SpaceX are already flying humans to the International Space Station on their Falcon 9 rockets. So they do have spaceflight experience too. But where does the money come from to turn from paid NASA flights to a personal plan to colonise Mars? How deep are Musk's pockets? Would people not only risk their lives to go to Mars as the ultimate frontier pioneers, but also pay for the privilege? These are kind of the unknowns. But if SpaceX do build a means to get people to Mars, I suspect Musk will certainly go there when he gets very old or if he becomes terminally ill. A last hurrah or dying wish of the billionaire that for the first time in human history allowed us to become a multi-planetary species. Or perhaps a disaster playing out on an interplanetary version of the Roanoke colonies. But interestingly, our nearest habitable neighbour isn't Mars, it's the Moon where colonists are still far enough away to survive a nuclear holocaust, pandemic or asteroid strike on Earth. NASA have already funded SpaceX to develop a lunar lander, and the Moon is only a few days away from Earth by rocket if its colonists need help. Mars is seven months away, and you can only go, or come back, in a favourable orbital alignment that occurs only every 26 months. So, if disaster strikes, you're effectively on your own. And that's without going into the difficulties when willing volunteers get there. Mars has an atmosphere just 1% as thick as Earth's. This means you need to wear a pressure suit or be in a pressurised habitation module forever. You can never feel the very fine breeze, smell the fresh air or even breathe outside, as Mars's atmosphere has barely any oxygen in it. No plants have evolved on Mars, so there's no food no nutrient-rich soil to grow plants or nourish cattle for food. There is no infrastructure there for habitation, harvesting, mining, manufacturing, nothing. Any Mars pioneers would have to take all of that and set it up when they get there. There is the possibility of terraforming Mars, so releasing gases on or from below the planet's surface to make the atmosphere hospitable, but that would be an engineering feat bigger than anything we've ever done on Earth, with none of the infrastructure or machinery that we have on Earth. So perhaps Musk just really likes Mars and wants to go there, and knows that if he can pull off the greatest migration in human history and start a colony there, there'll be plenty of people with that pioneering spirit prepared to risk everything for the adventure too. Yeah, going to Mars reads like that ad book for, for Shackleton going to the Antarctic. You know, it's, it's dangerous, uh, it's uncomfortable, um, it's a long journey, you might not, you know, come back alive. Um, but it's a glorious adventure and uh, it'll be amazing, an, an amazing experience. But tell us what you think. Will SpaceX perfect Starship? Will it take people to Mars? Will they be able to start a colony on Mars and will Musk take the trip himself? Would you go? Would you give up your life and loved ones for the ultimate pioneering experience or take them along with you? I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. And if you liked this video, Awesome Astronomy is also available twice a month in podcast form. Why not check out our episodes using the links below? Do remember to subscribe and like the show.